I look for? Um, I thought a long time before I started making videos about about this, because um, like I worked with Freddie W. I do I know how to do lots of silly, crazy special effects, and I I probably could have done what John and Hank do with Crash Course. Um, the two big are you for sale? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> The, the two big reasons I think that I decided not to do that, and it was a conscious decision, I think that was the important thing. It's not just that um, I happen to find. I think a lot of people, like, if you look at the, you watch PBS Nova programs, a lot of things have these really super fancy special effects to explain science. And I think in many ways it's intimidating and it's, a, it's trying to make science like exciting by making it flashy rather than by making it interesting. Um, so, and, and that applies to not just science, but um, other, other, anything else you're trying to you know, share with people. So, my thought was that I don't want to try to make something so flashy by as flashy to catch people's attention. I want to like actually share the core of it. And to me, I guess it's stick figures and, and drawing basically is a, is a way where you can feel like you know, I'm sitting down by it. You're sitting next to next to us, and we're just explaining something to you on the back of a napkin. Um, and that's really kind of and 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 the other the other really important reason to do drawings is that it's a lot faster and less expensive. So, um, also, obvious thing is do what you're really good at. I mean, Henry's a really good explainer and a really good artist and animator, and the Vlog Brothers are really good at talking to camera and having a personality. And Guy's a really talented musician and uses music. And my background is a journalist, so of course I'm going to be journalistic about it. And I'm sure you're going to all sorts of things. But you're also like, you know, you're, you're really good at talking and writing. You're a good writer, so you've got these scripts. So think about what you're good at, and then use that to achieve your ends. Do any of you have um, a channel that you have in the works that is education related? <coughs> I'm planning on uh, doing a history of clothing. One. And I was wondering uh, how, how you separate periods, because it's going to be really hard for me, I think, to also integrate history with clothing. That sounds cool. Um. <laughs> We, we we try not to uh, we try not to separate periods too much, or at least if we do, we try to acknowledge that that's a historical construct. Like no one woke up during the Renaissance and was like, "Man, this Renaissance is kicking butt." <laughs> like no one no one ever was like, "This man, it sure is great to live in a new kingdom in ancient Egyptian civilization." They were just living like us, and that stuff almost always gets named in retrospect. Um, and, and often is named very problematically as the Renaissance is because, like, you know, the Islamic world was doing just fine before the Renaissance. <laughs> um, so, you know, our, our we, we we try to not not imagine history that way, and a lot of that came from my wife because she's an art historian, and that's, that's a big deal in art history these days is, is taking down this, these ideas of um, you know this was the impressionist period and this was the, the neoclassical period and all, and all that stuff. And, um, and, and trying to view things in a broader historical context. So I guess I would just encourage you um, to try to look not just at the, the history of, of you know, what was happening to, to human beings, but what was also, also the history of science, the history of philosophy, the history of mathematics, what was being you know, discovered at that time, the history of the climate, how those things shaped the way that, that people dressed. I mean, the example I always use of that is that um, the, the Romans, uh, associated pants with like a lack of cultural sophistication and their sort of definition of barbarism was people who wore pants and then they expanded northward into Europe and all of a sudden they started wearing pants. <laughs> um, so you know there's lots of different lots of different ways to approach it. I'd like to hear from everybody else on that, um, but I'll answer first. <laughs> so, I mean, I think there are two points. One is to learn how, like, how, how to think about stuff, but the, the other equally important thing is to learn what to think about. So there's a lot of uninteresting things to think about, like Kim Kardashian, and we have to make a decision 
what to think about. And that's our decision to make every nanosecond of every day. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it's our decision, sometimes it doesn't feel like we're uh, free to, to choose what, what we think about, but we are. Um, and every minute that Henry spends thinking about physics is a minute that's helpful to us, and every minute, frankly, that he spends thinking about something else is a minute that's not quite as helpful to me. <laughs> so, I, I want people to learn how uh, to think, but I, I also want them to, to learn to think about what to think about. I think I'm going to respectfully disagree. All right. That, 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 that Kim Kardashian is not interesting. Oh, you're right. right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Which, so but I'm just going to keep going down this road because, like, I think that what has to exist in order for everybody in this room, for when we say Kim Kardashian, to go, like that is a, an amazing cultural and technological achievement that we have that we have reached, um, and I think that there is a lot that you can say and you can explain and you can deliver the facts about how we got there and how we have gotten to the point where fame is the kind of fame that Kim Kardashian has, uh, but that there is no answer at the end of that that road. There's no like, well, and now. We're done. Here we are. There is there is a whole other set of questions about like, well, so where does fame go from now on? And you know, how does television continue to play a role in fame? And how does technology continue to play a role in fame? And I think that there are ways for you to talk about just to keep keep inflating Kim Kardashian's fame. There are there are ways for you to talk about Kim Kardashian uh, and how how she happened that indicate questions. Uh, so I think that's, for me, that's where that relationship is. I think it can also be really useful not to tell people how to think or teach them thinking techniques, but just tell them how other people have thought. So, I mean, I have a big advantage in that because I'm talking to real scientists all the time and just seeing some real scientists all the time and saying, oh, I see what they did, I see what they're like, I see how they did that. You can then take that approach and apply it to what you're doing. So I think sometimes just watching people think, or well, sometimes with some of these guys' videos, they'll talk about, you know, this is what Einstein did, or this is what this is what so and so did, and just looking at the example of how other people have thought can be enough to help you develop your own way of thinking. So you don't have to sit there and say, this is how you think, this is how you should tackle a problem. Just look at how someone else tackled a problem and see if that suits you. I would say this is definitely one of the biggest things that I struggle with and I think about a lot when I'm making videos. Is that I don't want to be conveying facts. Like you can just go to Wikipedia if you want facts. Um, you can go. You can you can find out facts anywhere you want. And really what I, I try to do is to kind of figure out a way of bringing interesting facts together and in a way that people may not have thought about them before. And particularly with physics, in in a way that people may not have thought to help try to teach them before. Um, because a lot of times physicists just once they know something, they don't they don't really care to figure out a good way of explaining it to you because they're happy with themselves knowing it. Um, and or they just try to teach you math, and while math is really, really important in physics, it's not necessarily something that everybody should have to, to learn in order to understand the beauty of physics or, or any of these other, other things. So I really, I have like a, a really big um, kind of criteria that I never, I never want to just say facts. Um, I always want to either explain why we know something or why it's interesting or what it implies, like, or all three of those if possible. I think those are really important, important um, things to do. And to never also be satisfied with, with kind of thinking about something or explaining something in a way that other people have explained it to me. But to really try to, I try to go into the, and of course then, I'm not sure how that, how that you know, translates to the people watching it now. But, but I try to look at things and say, is this really the best way of thinking about it? Or is there maybe another way that's, that's easier and more intuitive to understand? Um, so. Before you go out and make a video, then do you go and see if you're thinking about particular business do you do a search and see how other people have explained it so you can do it better? Or? Sometimes, although there's not really that much diversity in the way certain things. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of, um, uh, not to get into the specifics here, but in, in physics in, in particular, there are a lot of things that are explained the same way all the time because some famous person in the past explained it that way. Um, whether it be Einstein or Richard Feynman or, you know, some, there are things that somehow have gotten into like the collective, you know, education system from like, you know, the lowest, you know, level elementary school, well, elementary school doesn't necessarily do, do physics, but when you do physics, science things in elementary school, all the way up to graduate school, 
there are certain things that are just kind of done in the same way because that was the way they were done at some point in the past. Um, and now that we know, for example, it's been over 100 years since the discovery of the theory of relativity, we still teach relativity, you know, the way Einstein thought about it. And that's not really the way people think about it today. And so, I mean, it's, it would be kind of like, you know, teaching, you know, do we teach about computers the way computers were thought about in 1935? No, we don't. We teach about computers in a very different way because computers are very different now. They do different things for us. Um, so I think that bringing things kind of up to speed and, and asking questions. And, and this is the beautiful thing about being online and not having to, having to deal with curricula and school boards and university standards and tests and all these things. Like we can take, we can take these things and go somewhere with them that other people can't. And if we don't take that opportunity, then I think we've somewhat failed. And that's why I look at, at online courses like Udacity and Coursera and some of these like edX, um, other, a lot of these have like lots of huge amounts of money that's been, that have been poured into them. And I, I look at them and I say they're doing really, they're, they're trying to do really good things. And I think that they're just not quite realizing how much freedom they have. And that they should just run with it and go so much farther than they are. Um, and so that's what I try to do. Um, and hopefully I succeed sometimes. So personally, in order to learn something, I have to make something. Interesting. Um, so, and, and that applies to not just science, but um, other, other, anything else you're trying to you know, share with people. So, my thought was that I don't want to try to make something so flashy by as flashy to catch people's attention. I want to like actually share the core of it. And to me, like it's, it's stick figures and, and drawing basically is, is a way where you can feel like you know, I'm sitting down or via you're sitting next to next to us and we're just explaining something to you on the back of a napkin. Um, and that's really kind of. And, and, and the other the other really important reason to do how did you decide the form? Um, I thought a long time before I started making videos about about this because um, like conscious decision I think that was the important thing it's not just that um, I happen to find. I think a lot of people, like, if you look at like, you watch PBS Nova programs, a lot of things have these really super fancy special effects to explain science. And I think in many ways it's intimidating and it's, a, it's trying to make science like exciting by making it flashy rather than by making it. I work with Freddie W. I, do, I know how to do lots of silly, crazy special effects and I, I probably could have done what John and Hank do with Crash Course. Um, the two big. Are you for sale? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> The, the two big reasons I think that I decided not to do that, it was